guys today we're going to paint a watercolor butterfly so really excited about this um, tutorial so we're back in the sketchbook and we have flipped to the back to start the sketchbook we flipped to the front to try the impressionism and now we are still at the front so I'm a couple of pages and I will kind of do a flip through for you at the end and show you there but we are going back to the front and we are trying a butterfly so as you can see here we have a uh, specimen a real life specimen and this I got off Etsy and I'll try and link the sh shop below and this is a mother of pearl butterfly I believe so I just wanted to kind of show you there in the different light the way that the uh, wings shine and you know the different iridescence that it creates and the color shifts and everything like that so um, that's something to keep in mind when you're painting a specimen like this is where you want to uh, create those color shifts and we will be using some iridescent colors over the top as well to create that beautiful um, natural shine that the butterfly has so you can see that i have just uh, pinned it onto the sketchbook here on the left so that i have a reference uh, while sketching this now one of the and you can see here that I am starting with the middle of the butterfly and that's sort of so I can center everything else but I will show you a bit later on again when I sketch things on camera my my line of sight is a little bit short and so it's a bit tricky so I really need to sort of sketch this um, you know off camera but anyway the one of the things that I use sketchbooks for is a preliminary sketch so I hear um, a lot of comments and I, I want you to know that, um, you know, I, I get a lot of comments with sort of discouragement about, you know, will I be, ever be able to paint like this and things like that. And I, I can tell you that you will. It just takes time and, you know, just being gentle with yourself, allowing yourself. And that's what the sketchbook is for me. It's just like a first draft and you know when we're at school we do a first draft second draft sometimes a final draft and then hand in the finished piece so um, you know certainly if the first thing doesn't succeed you just call that a draft and then you move on to your second draft so that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this sketchbook series and kind of follow me through a sketchbook so you can see how I practice things and what types of things I practice and you know whether I'm happy with them at the end or not or um, ways that I figure out you know how to do things differently so for example um, you know we can see here like I am sketching this and I started with the body and then I've done the top of the wing the bottom of the wing and then I do the other side um, but one of the things that I really realized from doing this draft or you know this sort of preliminary sketch is that um, every time I put down the first initial wash and I don't uh, do it thin enough and you know pale enough so I've got too much pigment and not enough water it's too dark and I always find it a struggle um, to try and lift that off afterwards so that is a regret that I have in painting this so you can see here that I'm putting on this initial wash of the uh, Holbein compose green is that what it is and then I'm also mixing in a little bit of the Holbein leaf green or like a green gold and I'm, I'm doing sort of a variation around the uh, wash so I'm adding a little bit more like of the leaf green then a little bit more of the compose green and just creating a little bit of variation there but if I was going to do this as a painting and I, again like I only had a morning to get this video done so um, if I was doing this in a more detailed painting I would do a very very thin pale wash because you can see in the butterfly there on the left uh, you can see even some paler spots some more highlighted spots in the leaves than I've left here 
so and it's very hard to lift those back off so these are just things that I want you to keep in mind you know as you're watching the tutorial and I'm going to show you all the steps here but you could also uh, take it even further than this and you know I could take a whole week or two weeks or a month to paint a specimen like this um, in more detail sample I would be more um, strict on the sketch and then I would also divide up you can see like the sort of triangles or the um, you know sort of the rectangular pieces of the wing and I would divide that up and paint each one individually a lot more carefully but I think this is a really nice way just to uh, ease into the painting so it's a little bit less strenuous and um, you'll have a beautiful um, piece of art at the end of it but like I said if you want to um, stop the video or take a screenshot and enlarge the butterfly on the left then you could actually trace it out a little bit more carefully and then you could um, just take a little bit longer take a few more steps and uh, you know do each piece of the butterfly but this is how you would do it you know just a lighter wash in the beginning so what I'm doing now is um, I've added into the wings there you can see I added a little bit of French ochre um, for the color variation there and then I'm also now I'm just taking hematite and I am adding in those dark uh, areas around the butterfly so I think the hematite's really good because it's got sort of a soft brown undertone and to kind of match in with the uh, color here but you could add Mars black and with a touch of a brown like a lighter brown uh, mixed in to sort of get a similar coloring the other thing I really liked about editing this video and watching it back is um, again like I'm not seeing the butterfly exactly how you guys are seeing it on the video and so when I'm looking at it now I can see the beautiful different colorings in the bottom of the butterfly it's a little bit more blue green and the top it's a little bit more yellow green so that is something to consider if I was painting this again I would take all that into consideration and then you can see uh, at the bottom there in the in the middle of the wings like in between the wings it goes almost to a pale white so again those are all um, things that you can look at when you're um, painting this and then also you don't have to use the colors that I'm using you can mix things you know from colors that you have as well so now what I'm doing is I'm just wetting the entire leaf uh, what am I talking about the entire wing so uh, I'm gonna do some wet on wet in the leaf for the little uh, spots here I don't know if they have a particular name but just for the kind of decorations here so I want the hematite to kind of bleed out a little bit and soften into the uh, wing. So you can see here that I just continue to drop in more hematite as it's drying and then I'm just lifting off any excess water if I don't need to use it I'm just you know pulling that up so it doesn't sort of create a puddle or a different kind of you know dry with a bloom or anything um, and yeah I just continue to drop hematite in while it's um, you know for the first little while before it sort of starts drying just to make sure it's at the right um, strength that I want it at
So you can see that I have now switched to a smaller brush. This is an Escoda Reserva number no. one, and I am using it um, pretty. So the reason I'm switching to this brush is because it doesn't hold as much water. It holds more pigment, so the pigment goes on stronger because um, there's more pigment and less water. It's not sort of dispersing out at all. Um, so I'm using this to add in some extra details and uh, create that, um, you know, the stronger lines that I need. going back in now and I am just wetting and softening out one side of the line that I put in so just the underside and just to um, make it the transition transition a little bit smoother and a bit more natural and then I am putting in you can see these kind of vertical lines down the uh, wings here which kind of separate out um, part of the you know wing coloring I guess but um, I am a little bit all over the place today it's been a, a long week so um, okay and on this side there uh, I'm just doing the same thing and I'm going in and I am intensifying the marks there so you know we'd let them soften out a little bit and now I want to go in and add a little bit more uh, strength and a bit more structure in there that I am using the mix of the composed green and the Daniel Smith Duochrome Lapis Sunlight to give some of those beautiful iridescent uh, lines there and um, you know as we move along we will try and put some of that softer lighter color back into the middle of the um, butterfly sort of at each side of the body So again, like we are talking about, you know, using a sketchbook, how to use a sketchbook and why to um, practice these types of things. And you can see here that like the body, the top of the wings, and I'll kind of show you this, but um, the proportion is a little bit wrong here. That's why you don't kind of get that really beautiful feeling. Like when you see the butterfly on the left, the proportion is so exact and beautiful. So now I'm just... Um, softening a little bit of the um, duochrome lapis sunlight over just half of the 
uh, spots here so that it sort of brings a little bit of that iridescence and kind of blends it into the butterfly's wing a little bit. Um, but what I was saying is, so I, you can see here like even um, that the the sort of where I've placed the wings there is not exactly, you know, down far enough like that could be down a little bit more like that. Um, so these are all again things, you know, when you watch an artist um, practice, they always do uh, practice uh, copies and you know, um, that's how we learn. So I don't want you to sort of be discouraged by watching these videos. I think it's a little bit tricky for me because we have um, some, you know, very beginners. We have some who have been painting for decades. And so how to provide content for sort of a wide range of people who really enjoy watercolors or who want to learn about watercolors. So I'm trying to provide content that will help you you know on any stage of your journey or you know inspiration if you already kind of know how to paint or if you're a beginner and you're learning how to paint but I just I, I certainly do not want these videos to be discouraging I really really hope that um, they come across as encouraging I think I've told this story before in here but when all through school I was pretty much a music major and I would do art as kind of a side thing but it wasn't my main thing and I really um, you know, it wasn't necessarily drawn to, I really love these colors. So this is um, Sugalite and uh, Hematite Violet, I think. And um, so you can see I'm just dry brushing this on to kind of create those colors there. So the brush is pretty, pretty close to dry. You know, it was damp, I've dried it off and I'm just kind of putting those marks on there. And I'll get back to the story, but um, this I'm just wetting the I've decided now that because sort of I haven't left enough highlights I want to make the background dark to sort of bring some of that out so I am using a larger brush that holds a lot of water this is the Tintoretto number no. four and I am now putting water all around the butterfly and then we will soften color into that to sort of soften into the background Okay, so where was I? So I was a music major. I went to a music conservatory and I did um, a couple of other things at uni, but I never, I never, anyway, um, I didn't, anyway, blah, blah. But um, when I was in year 12, I took art and then the first day in the class, the teacher sort of said, you have three major works to produce and there's gouache at the front, uh, you know, and I'm like, what's gouache? I have no idea how to create a major work. I'm not Da Vinci, I cannot do it. It's it's not something that I can even pursue. And so I dropped the class and that was that. So, but I think at that time, you know, I was still soaking in life. Um, I had to travel on a train and a tram for about an hour to school. And sometimes I would just skip the morning class and just walk through all the cobblestones and um, take in the buildings in the city. And uh, my friend and I would go and try on hats when it was um, the racing season. And so, you know, we just, just was a really nice uh, time. And then in uni, one of my oral teachers would make us um, like stand around this balcony in this beautiful hall and uh, sing and you know do these just magical things so art wasn't necessarily kind of on the cards for me at that time but I was still sort of unconsciously looking at colors looking at shapes uh, looking at architecture looking at fashion and um, you know even sort of all kinds of different things so uh, like it has taken me a lot a long time a lot of years to get to this point and there were times in my life I used to see the watercolor um, the palettes and I couldn't afford them but I really I was drawn to it and you know a, a, many years later like here I am uh, with these watercolors doing these videos so don't be discouraged, just take it a step at a time um, and, you know, enjoy the process. 
enjoy the journey and if something doesn't turn out as expected call it a draft and just move on and you know it doesn't matter if you have to do uh, the painting several times to try and come up with something and every time you can kind of look at it and say so this is where I started to try and bring in a little bit more of the white color so this is the Prismacolor gray green light this is one of my favorite pencils but um, yeah so every time you can look at it and just um, consider sort of the parts that you do like and consider parts that you can change so always look at it in a positive way like okay what do I like and then how can I improve not like oh this is horrible you know I can't I can't fix it you can fix it you just got to figure out which things um, need a little bit more attention so even like for this video I didn't have long I knew I had to get a certain amount of videos done and even looking at the butterfly it was a little bit overwhelming there's a lot going on with the butterfly um, and so that's where a draft comes in that's where you just begin you try something if it doesn't work out that is okay because you can you can try again and in building and in trying you begin to see your own style evolve so what does what is style it's the way that you like to hold the you know brush do the brush strokes do you like you know large expressive expressive strokes do you like to do very small detail um, you know color wise uh, you know your color palettes and all those types of things they all begin to work together and then you can see um, something really magical evolve and come together so you can see there the iridescent copper is what I used in the background and also on the wings to create that sort of red tinge that you can see in the butterfly. Uh, I also used a little bit of the Sennelier uh, silver ink and then in a minute we'll use a pearl white uh, pastel as well so uh, you can see that in my little plate of pastels video and you know all the links and everything are there but I'm going to link a couple of blog posts that I've done uh, with different artists that inspire me and you'll see all kinds of different styles Okay guys so that is it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and kind of um, it gives you a bit of confidence to try this tutorial even if it looks a little bit tricky and don't worry if it doesn't work out exactly the first time the first step is you know beginning the journey so um, next video I'm gonna try and get three videos up this week since I know we only got one last week so uh, let's see we are going to to continue to work in the sketchbook so you can see here a bit of a flip through that was the cover page that we did and then we have done this impressionism one and then we did this one and, and you'll also be able to see so this will, will be coming next this is our next video and then we will have another video which I think I'll show you in a second yeah, so we'll do these two videos this week. Um, and then if you've seen the Impressionism video, you've seen how it went from the sketchbook through to starting to figure out the workings of a painting. So anyway, guys, I hope that you have a really nice week and a nice week of painting. And um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.